Hi folks, how you doing? It's James, JT at the movies and I'm in a slightly different location to normal. We're in, uh, in our living room mm -hmm. uh, and I'm joined by my lovely girlfriend, Laura. Hello. Uh, who's not been on the channel for a, for a long while now, yeah, have you? It's been a while. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but we, we've both a day off work tomorrow, which is uh, an absolute blessing and a rare occurrence that it happens together. Um, and we're gonna go tomorrow lunchtime and see the latest Halloween film, Halloween Ends. And if you know me, if you know us and you know this channel, we love a good movie marathon, be it big or small. So we thought that we'd undertake a little mini movie marathon to get us refreshed and, and up to speed, ready for, ready for Halloween Ends. So we are gonna watch the original Halloween, which is in this box set. We're then gonna follow it up with the 2019 sequel, Halloween. Um, both of those we've, we've seen. This one, however, passed us by with the pandemic and everything, so we've not actually seen Halloween Kills. So I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. You've not seen this either, have you? Yeah. So um, yeah, it's gonna be gonna be really good to, to watch those three. So the plan is that we watch those three tonight and have a little movie marathon, come back to you after each film with our refreshed thoughts, and then head out to the cinema tomorrow and, uh, and go and see Halloween Ends at the cinema and give you our thoughts after that. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely, I'm looking forward to it as well. It's been a really long time since I've seen the first Halloween mm. film. We've watched the Halloween 2019 a couple of times since yeah. it's come out, haven't we? I think that might be the only Halloween film I've seen. Oh wow, really? Just, just from memory, I do not remember watching any of the others apart from the one you and I have seen. Ah, oh, fair enough. I've seen most of them. I know there's a couple I've not seen. Like, I've not seen the second Rob Zombie one. And there's one of the ones from the 90s that I've not seen. Um, but I've seen most of them. But it's, it's a long time since I've watched most of them. Probably I was a teenager the last time I watched the first Halloween. So I'm looking forward to going in. It's essentially almost fresh, almost new again. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. So we're gonna crack on with the very first Halloween. Well, folks, we're just out of the original uh, 1978 Halloween film. I had a bloody great time with that, Laura. Mm, what did you think? I liked it as well. Really liked it. Yeah, it was it was, it was really great for me to to refresh myself on this, and uh, so I've not seen it in in the longest time, probably since I was a teenager when I bought that box set. So it was really nice to to sort of go back and and, and revisit it. Um, do you know, I really liked with this, Laura, that sort of probably not so much by today's standards or the you know the standards of horror films today, but you know, obviously by, by probably its own standards, it, it's, it's a fairly slow burning film, isn't it? Yeah. Or at least it felt like it to me. Because like, there's not much sort of action. Mm. And apart from like, obviously the, the beginning, you get the introduction of Michael and him and killing, uh, his, you know, his older sister. And, and obviously the, then the, the escape from the prison hospital in, in fairly quick succession. But then after that, as we're introduced to, to Laurie Strode, obviously played by Jamie Lee Curtis, you would say obviously it's a breakout yeah, role as well. Yeah. Um, and obviously Annie and then uh, we're introduced to like Lindsay and Tommy and, and the sheriff and, and we sort of learned don't we about their sort of basically they're just sort of their day to day routines yeah. and the fact that the two the two lead girls in it are babysitters and that it's Halloween coming up and there's a school dance and you know one of them's got a crush on a boy and it's, it's all very much yeah. just normal day to day stuff isn't it but then Michael starts appearing sort of just silently in the background yeah, doesn't he popping up in the background just doing the old stare <laughs> absolutely yeah and then laurie thinks she notices him a couple of times and gets a little bit spooked but then her friends you know obviously talk her out of it or whatever and it really isn't until the last sort of third of the film the third act is it that sort of the um the metaphorical hits the fan yeah. um and and michael starts doing what he's you know what he's doing sort of thing but I really liked that it built up to that. Like a lot of modern horror films now, like, you know, it's somebody's been killed within the first 10 minutes and set the scene that way. And I suppose that's that's how it's done now. But I really liked that this, you know, the, the way that it that it sort of approached it. And I suppose there's no wonder it's sort of deemed as one of the, the absolute classics of the genre and, and yeah. one of the sort of the turning points for, that, for sort of modern horror. That music as well, I mean, come on. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's so, well, it's not simple because I think it's in like 58 or something for anybody that's <laughs> that's musically inclined, you'll know what I mean. They're the time signature. But, but it, it's simple in the sense of, it's mostly just piano and I think there's maybe a little bit of synth or organ or something in there. And it's written again by John Carpenter, who's obviously the, the director and the, the writer of, of, mm. of this whole thing. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's sort of like you're going to did and did and did and sort of the, the, the big sort of theme. But then you get these like bass notes, don't you, that yeah. are sort of like, you know, they are, are a little synth from 
sort of, and you know that there's there's something of note happening on the screen, and I, I just really like, like you said, yeah. the, the musical motif. It's of like, it. it's one of those where it's like, you hear the first couple of notes and you know exactly what it is. It's one of those where you can just automatically tell what movie it is from. Like, for example, The Exorcist, you know that right off the top of your head, and then there's Nightmare on Elm Street as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's got that same sort of iconic yeah. status, hasn't it? Uh, but I mean, so is the whole film, really. I think, you know, when, when people are doing lists of favourite horror films, you know, Nightmare and Exorcist and this are, are usually quite high up on mm. people's lists, and it's it's no surprise that it's stood the test of time. I think for me, going back to this for this this rewatch, I'd be giving it an eight point five out of ten. I'm gonna give it an eight. Out Fair of 10. enough. Absolutely brilliant. So we'll see you after the uh, I think it's two thousand and nineteen uh, remake um, sequel of Halloween. So we are back after just finishing the the two thousand nineteen reboot. Uh, again, simply titled Halloween. Mm -hmm. Do you know, after watching it sort of straight after the first one, I got a lot more out of it this yeah. time. And I, and I loved it when we saw it in the cinema and when we've like watched it on Netflix since. But yeah. I got I got so much more out of that watching it sort of straight afterwards and like all the subtle comparisons and things like that that I'm sure people who've seen the original loads of times would have gotten. But like, like the opening sort of, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or whatever where it's setting the scene and... Like all, all the different, like, you know, see the, the prison break and then uh, the bit where the the granddaughter, Alison's looking out the window at school and when the original Laurie saw Michael. Yeah. Um, like, obviously, she see you know, the granddaughter sees Laurie and I was just like little callbacks like that. And again, that, that they reused that fantastic score, didn't they, from John Carpenter yeah. and he's involved in the... The music as well as is it Cody um, Cody Carpenter I think he's credited and somebody else as well I forget the name forgive me but obviously you know it's great to have them them back involved and I'm sure that means that it's got his seal of approval but I, yeah, I really really liked this I thought it was a perfect example of a of a later day sequel done well what what yeah. did you think like I really liked Jamie Lee Curtis in this she's not only does she look brilliant she is brilliant in it she just she gives me it's like a mix of Sarah Connor and Carol from The Walking Dead. She's just, she gives me that kind of vibe, and that's what just, I really just like. Absolute badass vibes, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, the, the, the Sarah Connor um, comparison, we, we've sort of mentioned when we were watching it, I suppose it's, it's, it's quite a good, um, a, a good comparison to make, isn't mm. it? Because obviously, in the first Terminator film, Sarah Connor is very much sort of, uh, I suppose, in a way, a bit of a, not an audience surrogate issue, but she, she's sort of very. You know, she's she's obviously learning the uh, learning the ropes, isn't she? She has to 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 survive, sort yeah. of thing. Whereas in this, she's she's much more obviously well prepared, and the the unfortunate years of trauma that it's brought about her has meant yeah. that she's just this evolved character. And the comparisons say between Terminator and Terminator Terminator Two, and then the original Halloween and this, I think, yeah, really really quite an interesting uh, sort of similar comparison to mm. you know to sort of make. I really love the cast in this, um, and forgive me, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting everybody's names, but the uh, is it Judy Gray is the mum. Yeah. Yeah, Judy, and I, and I forget the the young girl who plays Alison in it, but the chemistry that Judy Gray and that um, obviously uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and then the the, the, the girl playing Alison have got is great, and I really like the the sheriff in this, and I like the the guy who was the the new Doctor Loomis sort of character, and I thought it was an interesting take on what they did with him having him ultimately be revealed to be sort of I suppose not a bad guy well he is a bad guy and he sort of attacks the sheriff doesn't he but um yeah he, he, he's lost the plot basically yeah. rather than being sort of on the ball like Dr Loomis is in that first one um and yeah the, obviously the, the sheriff was great and I, I liked the bit of levity and the almost comic relief out of the out of I the just, just really enjoyed it I don't know what more I could be saying without sort of just rambling really mm -hmm. and I suppose these are just sort of Quick fire thoughts on how we're feeling. Stay tuned for our thoughts very, very shortly on Halloween Kills. So, it's actually the next day because it was getting on for midnight by the time we finished Halloween Kills. And um, we, were, we were both feeling uh, a bit worse for wear. So we decided yeah. to go to bed. You've just got back in from work, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, in about an hour's time, we're going to go to the cinema and see uh, Halloween Ends. But first, our thoughts on Halloween Kills. So... This film, we didn't see it in the cinema uh, when it came out because it was still sort of COVID times and for, for whatever reason it sort of, you know, it, it passed us by sort of thing. There wasn't the, the sort of the urgency to go and see it that maybe there was the the, the first of this sort of reboot trilogy. 
and um, so I obviously watched it for the first time last night. I enjoyed it for the most part, but I did think that the ending let it down. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I, I I really really liked like the the, the sort of. I suppose it's gonna be a weird comparison to make, but it almost felt like what Quantum of Solace is mm -hmm. to Casino Royale. Like it literally picks up seconds after the other one's finished, and it's all a continuation of the same night. And it's really the town sort of coming together, isn't it? And yeah. uh, sort of being sick and tired of this sort of legend of the boogeyman, sort of you know, hovering over them. And then when they all catch wind that he's escaped and he's back and there's been more murders. And, you know, you, you get characters sort of coming out of the woodwork to want to try and help. And obviously you get Lonnie and you get Tommy Doyle and you get Lindsay and then the nurse from the first one, all minor sort of like supporting characters getting their own sort of like arcs. And I, and I did enjoy that. And I sort of enjoyed the sort of the, you know, the town spirit of sort of coming together and, you know the, the 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 current sheriff trying to sort of keep it all under wraps, and then the old sheriff bringing him back, uh, and him sort of rallying up the rallying up the troops, and I again enjoyed Jamie Lee Curtis, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed Judy Greer, and um, I think is it Andy or Addy Addy Matchuk that that plays Alison the the granddaughter. Um, I, I really enjoyed all of their their sort of performances, and I think that the three of them as the as the three leads work really well together. Where this film fell apart for me was the third act, when they got back to, to Michael's childhood home mm -hmm. uh, that Big John and Little John had, had, had now sort of moved into, and that's sort of where the, the culmination of it all takes place. And it all got a little bit bit silly. Yeah. Sort of like there was the whole sort of like Judy Greer, you know, she, she lures Michael and she leads him out onto the street where... All the all the people that we've mentioned, you know, Tommy Doyle and whoever else, and the, the townsfolk are all ready to to take him on and put an end to it finally, um, and the, and they seemingly do so, and then and then they start sort of doing this sort of like monologue of oh well he, you know he, he he is the boogeyman and you know he is supernatural and you know there's there's there's, there's no way that he could have survived everything and then all of a sudden he just sort of pounces back into yeah. life, doesn't he? Yeah. And, and, you know, takes on a crowd and kills them all with, with absolute ease. And then the, the final scene of the film is, I, mean, I don't know how he gets past the police blockade or, or anything. And I know he's supposed to suspend disbelief with this stuff, but it just, it really took me out of it. And then he obviously kills Judy Greer's character in the, in, in the bedroom where he killed his sister in the original one. Um, and me and Laura were both sort of sat like, really? Oh, what? Yeah. I mean... Have you, have you anything else to sort of add to that? Not really. It's just like it was just really confusing. I mean, he could have slipped away from the crowd after killing them. Yeah, and gone in through the back door. But that, again, just doesn't really sound like Michael, does it? It's like, how does he get from the street into the bedroom so quickly? How? I, no, I didn't understand that at all. <laughs> it wasn't that I didn't understand it. I just didn't care for it for me. No, I didn't really care for it. And why kill her? Yeah. You know, why kill her? She had no reason. Well, I suppose none of them have any, any sort of reason to die, and I suppose there's some deaths that maybe you root for more than others if the characters have been unpleasant throughout mm. the film or whatever. And it was like, as soon as, in the first one, as soon as we saw Cameron cheat on uh, on, on Alison with um, with the other girl at the party, you're like, well, if, if not this film, he's done for at some point. Yeah. And sure enough, in, in this new one, he was. And yeah, yeah he did quite have quite a good redemption arc, because like, when, when he sort of you know, reacted to sort of her confronting him in the first one. He was a real dick about it, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. But then it, I think I think they they you know they they, they took great steps to to giving him a a fairly decent redemption arc in in this one. Um, but ultimately, he got what you knew was was coming to him, sort of thing. But yeah, I, I don't know. Just just something about the third act of this one didn't didn't land for me. I did love how Laurie sort of gets her, like, Liam, I want to call it like a Liam Neeson moment where she's talking to Michael on the phone and she's like, I will find you, Michael, and I will kill you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it, it, I suppose it felt like a bridging movie to setting up a final confrontation. Yeah. So I suppose we'll see what we get after Halloween ends, but I'll give this one... 6.5 out of 10. Yeah, I'm going to go the same, 6.5. So we're going to head to the cinema now and we will see you after Halloween ends. So
So we've arrived at the cinema. We have, yes. And we're going to go and see Halloween Kills. So we'll, not Halloween Kills, we just watched that one. Halloween Ends, and we'll see you after that. Well, folks, we are out of the cinema now. We're back in the back in the car, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've just finished watching Halloween Ends. So, spoilers um, ahead. Um, obviously, the other films have been out quite a while, but this one's quite quite fresh in the cinema. So, spoilers. If you don't want to know anything, I, I'm not going to hold back. And neither are you, are you, Laura? Nope. Um, yeah, a bit of a bit of a mixed reaction on this one. Um, it wasn't bad, but I don't think it was good either. No. It it wasn't really... I mean, it was a Halloween movie, but it wasn't at the same time. The majority of the focus on the story was of the young chap, Corey, who we see at the beginning of the film, um, accidentally kills the, the, the young lad that he's babysitting after the young lad's prank goes wrong, and he basically opens a door into him and knocks him down a flight of stairs, and... Um, the, the kid, you know, dies as a, as a result of his injury sort of thing. So that the town sort of shuns this young lad, Corey, but you're made to feel sort of, you know, bad for him. And he's, you know, he's, you know, good kid with his head screwed on sort of thing. And he's just, just had sort of bad things happen to him. And then, and then we sort of catch up with, with Alison and Laurie, uh, again, played by Jamie Lee Curtis and, uh, Andy Matichuk. And... Jamie Lee Curtis is in a really good space. The the major the, the majority of the story, um, I don't know what word I was trying to say there, <laughs> uh, but the majority of the story um, takes place four years after the 2018. And I've been saying 2019 in this because that's what the Blu-ray said, and I didn't think to look it up on IMDb. But the 2018 Halloween movie, and Laurie has sort of come to terms for the most part with her trauma and the the death of her daughter Karen in the last one Judy Greer's character has brought her and, and Alison closer together they're living together Alison's a nurse and, and everybody seems to have sort of gone on with their lives and then Alison and Corey end up finding each other and starting a starting a relationship and everyone's sort of dogging on them because obviously the you know it's this sort of small town close knit community and everybody has their own opinion on whether or not Corey was responsible for this young boy's death and there's like it's basically just sort of a... It's almost a spin-off, isn't it? Yeah. Sort of, it's like the, the lives of everybody that, you know, lives in Haddonfield sort of thing, rather than it being a, being a Halloween movie. And then it felt to me, and I don't know what you think about this, Laura, but it felt to me like they didn't know how they wanted to portray Michael in this. Yeah. No, that's the feeling I was... I was saying to you in the cinema, it's kind of like... They're not quite sure what to do with Michael, but they want this kid to sort of be a... Like, I, I think I used the word proxy, didn't I? Kind of, like, doing Michael's yeah. work for him. Yeah, absolutely, because they were sort of like... Michael's been living in the sewers since the since he escaped the, the last... You know, the, the, the last film's event sort of thing. And he's, he's shown to be sort of weak and a bit feeble and... He, he sees something in uh, in Corey when Corey ends up being chased into the uh, well. Actually, he gets knocked off a bridge, doesn't he? And then he gets dragged into the sewer. Um, but when him and Michael sort of come face to face, Michael clearly sees something in him that mm. obviously he he sort of resonates with. And and yeah, like like you say, he almost sort of becomes a becomes a proxy, doesn't he? And he sort of yeah. ends up taking on the the Michael Myers mantle for like a lot of the third act. Um, but the killings aren't random. The the people that have wronged him throughout yeah. the film, and it it was a completely different approach to it. And and then then they suddenly decide that Michael is fitting well enough to mm. fight because there's this whole sort of like fight in the sewers for Michael's mask, and they sort of the way I interpreted it anyway sort of depict Michael as this sort of like you know weaker old man that's succumbing to his injuries, and. You know, he's obviously sort of malnourished because he's been living in the sewers and whatever else. And he, he, he sort of quite swiftly loses that fight, doesn't he, to Corey? Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden, no, he's 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 back at it again. And there's a, a, a yet another final confrontation at Laurie Strode's house, and and then the the whole town sort of band together. And once they've finally killed Michael, they they put him through a. You know, like a wood chipper, and uh, make sure that his body is absolutely obliterated. I think what I noticed was when he 
when Corey drags the first guy into the sewers to be killed by Michael, Michael stabs him once, but then sort of does this thing where he rears back and does like a little sort of shiver thing. And I think that's what they were trying to portray is Michael getting his strength back, getting that urge to that urge to kill. That blood yeah, sort of back. leaning into the supernatural without necessarily saying it's the supernatural. That's just what I noticed, but it's like that. That's really the road they're going to go down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There were some interesting moments in it. There were some there were some fun kills and there were some creepy moments. Mm. I'd definitely watch it again. Some brutal kills. But I, I would I would agree largely that it's a bit of a, a bit of a letdown. Yeah. Sort of as a you know as a culmination of of this sort of story because. Like I say, mm. my, Michael and, and Laurie really only get 10, 15 minutes together at the end. And I don't know, you could almost you could almost argue, couldn't you, as well, that the characters have to develop and grow and for there to be any point to a sequel, mm. they kind of have to somewhat have gotten past it. I don't know, Laura, what, what do you think? I, don't know, I think I'm in the same uh, same opinion of you, as you, yeah. It just, it just didn't feel right. There was something missing from it. Yeah, I, I couldn't couldn't tell you what, but there was, yeah, there was something, something not, not there that... that Perhaps needed to be there, mm. and then they, I, I personally, I think they went a bit over top with the uh, over the top with the end. Just the way they got rid of Michael, sort of parading him through the town. Yeah, I, I didn't mind that bit myself, but um, but I, I can I can see why you'd why you'd think that. Yeah, I'm of the opinion just don't give them any more attention, just get rid of them quietly. I think just... I think they all wanted to know, sort of like there's a sense of sort of like a you know a catharsis sort of to it, like no, he's gone. Yeah. Um, in fact, that was one of the things I did like was where one of the officers is like, this is not the way. And then the sheriff's like, no, for this, it's the way. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It was just the whole Corey character. Like, I felt bad for him. Yeah. And then I don't quite think we had enough time to really appreciate his downfall or just how, you know... A complex of a character they wanted him to be. I don't think that there was enough. I think if he'd have been introduced in the last film, and maybe we'd have had time over two films to to develop that and that relationship as well. You know that he has with Alison. I, I think maybe that that could have like that could have worked better. Yeah. But that's my thoughts. Have you any any final thoughts on it, Laura? Not really. I think you've just explained my thoughts perfectly as well. I think I'm in a similar boat to you. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, I think that I'd uh, I'd rate this film sort of reflecting on the the other films that we've watched. I think I'd rate it a six out of ten. Yeah, definitely. Just everything I've seen, I'd say six and a half out of ten. So there you have it, folks. That's been our sort of little Halloween reboot universe marathon. I've really enjoyed doing this, and I've really enjoyed doing this with Laura as well. It's been it's been great to have a little mini movie marathon. We've had so much on this year, as I've been very open with you about. And watching movies, let alone doing a movie marathon, has just been the furthest thing uh, from being possible for us. So to have a have a, a window of time open up where we're both off work and we've both, uh, you know, able to to not have any other commitments to be able to to do this has just been brilliant I, I loved revisiting the original 78 halloween i uh, really enjoyed uh even if it's been a mixed quality sort of watching the reboot trilogy in in really quick succession i felt like i've got more out of it watching them sort of back to back to back i just i'm just happy to have finally seen the halloween films because the only one like i said i've seen is uh, the one before halloween kills so. yeah the the, the the 2018 reboot absolutely yeah. and you know for a follow-up maybe in the in the fullness of time i might do uh might do a series where I, I have a look at some of the other ones and revisit them because like I say, I've not seen most of them since I was a since I was a teenager. I did always have a soft spot for the Rob Zombie one, and I know that that's uh, usually at the bottom of people's piles. So it'd be interesting maybe to to look at that with a you know sort of a, a more seasoned set of eyes and see whether I still enjoy it as much but mm. absolutely it's been a pleasure to make this video and to watch these films again i hope for you guys watching this vlog at home that you've enjoyed it if you have leave your comments down below on the on the films let's get a conversation going because you do know i love to chat to you guys in the comments and it'd be uh, be really fun to, to hear your thoughts as well and i say get that conversation going if you've liked the video drop it a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel and you're not already subscribed please think about uh, subscribing to the channel of course it helps the channel to grow but i get to keep you around as well and get get to know you more over future videos above all else folks take care of yourselves and we'll see you very soon